Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. It's me, I'm Matt, and I'm the king of armor destruction, and we've got a body armor demo review, whatever you want to call it today, from Safe Life Defense. In the past, we tested their level three in conjunction with plate. This one's new. This is their level three plus standalone, meaning that there are no backers required for this one to stop all the threats listed on it. This guy is approximately 1.07 inches thick, or 27.5 four millimeters for those across the pond. It weighs four pounds and 11 ounces. As I mentioned, this is their frass or flexible rifle armor system, meaning that this plate will stop rifle threats and it's not rigid, it's actually flexible. You can see me bending it there. Now, because this has more polyethylene on the back of it to make it standalone, it doesn't flex as much as the previous panel does, but it's still plenty flexible. This is essentially comp accomplished with a bunch of little tiny hexagon ceramic tiles on here for our strike face. Now over here on my channel we side on the information side with a little bit of entertainment here and there telling you some horrible dad jokes. So I try to maintain as many constants as possible out here. We shoot at 45 feet. That is the official NIJ testing distance for rifle armor. We shoot at zero degrees because that is worst case scenario. We have a chronograph, Pro Chrono Pile Digital DLX, that we measure the velocity of each bullet because if that bullet is stopped at 3250 feet per second coming out of my 22 inch gun, any shorter barrel lengths and any distance is going to only aid the armor's performance. Since this employs a ceramic strike face, we've gone ahead per the NIJ and dropped it on its face two times. We also do a torque test, that's where we kind of torque the plate side to side and tap on it when we're done to listen for any cracks. We did not hear any cracks, although it's a flexible plate, so it's hard. it would be hard to tell if one of those little tiles was cracked. We also use a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma Plastilina number one clay donated by Siobhan. I can't keep the temperature out here, but it acts as a good compressible media and kind of gives us a representation of back face and it weighs like 90 pounds. We put a spreadsheet here at the beginning and at the end we fill it all out after we do our teardown to confirm any penetrations. As a disclaimer, I want to mention that anything you guys see me test here in stop is only applicable to this test. You should always go to the manufacturer and have them seek out official NIJ accredited, accredited lab tests to confirm what you see here is indeed true. If I forgot to mention in the opening video, Safe Life Defense in full transparency provided us with these level three plus frasses to demo with no strings attached. There's a lot of misinformation online about how that exchange happens between a manufacturer, retailer, or vendor and, and content maker, influencer, shill, whatever you wanna call us. But for me, pretty much, usually I'm just provided with stuff and I do with as I please. You know, I take into consideration that I'm not out here to just throw 50 BMG at that and call it a crap plate. I want to give you guys a fair assessment. There's also misinformation online where that thing is made. A lot of people think that that particular plate and a lot of other stuff from Safe Life Defense is made in China. That's actually made in Italy and their Hyperline, which I'm trying to get my hands on a test, is made in the U.S. And I do believe that it's going to be NIJ compliant, which has a whole bunch of logistics behind it. And it's hard to do that if you import those. So up first for our frazz, because we're not messing around, we're gonna shoot M80 ball, 145, 150 grain, going 2750 feet per second. But I've got a 24 inch 308 right here, our Savage Axis 110 tactical with our JK Armament rifle kit on here. So we're gonna see probably 28 to almost 3000 feet per second on this. So we're looking for back face on this because last time with our backer, the ICW plate stopped it. So this will be interesting. I'm gonna place this in the top of the plate. I pulled that one, uh oh. Place this one in the right hand side. Getting good velocity. 
sun was in my eyes. This one, I'm gonna place in the lower right hand corner. And then this one, I'm gonna put back up towards the top because I messed that first one up. And I just smoked a strap. Now we've brought out our king of speed, the 22 inch TC Compass Turbo 556 Suppressor, 16 power SLX series scope from Primary Arms. We've got our armor slaying speed demons here. We have our 55 grain full metal jacket, M193. Then we have four rounds of M855A1, that is the Army's current ball round. Very nice enhanced performance round. Last time, I think these were stopped in the backer from this particular barrel length. Now we haven't gone down and looked at the plate yet, but I did, or I haven't shown you guys, there is a considerable amount of back face from our 308 threats. But because of this arrangement of this plate, it is good at stopping lots of threats. So M193 first. This should be on the second line of our dots. Did not get a velocity off that, folks. It might be the angle of the sun. This one will be right next to it. Thirty-four, twenty-four, nice. And this one, I'll put the same line. Cool. Now the A1, third line, starting all the way at the left. velocity off that. And then this last nice. Oh, I actually have one more. What, what am I doing here? Can't count guys. Okay, now let's go see what we did. This is uh, not too good for me folks. I gotta beat that hole back in, but that's my fault. Look at how close to the edge I shot that. I believe it stopped it, but it might have pushed upwards. That's why the NIJ does not shoot towards the edge because of the unpredictability of those rounds. So then shot number two was down here. That is a fair hit. Shot number three was right here. And then shot number four was all the way down here. And we went to our long and strong 556 five, threats. M193 shots number one, two, and three right there. And then our A1s, one, two, three, four and five that is considered a fair hit at least i'll consider it it's about two inches like i said this strike face did very well in the last test and essentially all we're doing is adding more polyethylene to make this back face for 308 and we'll let the plate just fall off like that and that. Ho! Uh oh raggy we actually have Maybe some penetrations on two of those, or definitely on the first one is questionable. The third one was stopped, although it's close to the top. That second one, we'll double check that. And the fourth one even might have poked through there. We'll also double check. But otherwise, our 5.56 five, threats We're all stopped. Nice. I wonder if we need some more polyethylene on there or I'm just over spec for that particular round and, and that's the limit of this particular design. I have two spots left on this plate that I'm confident that there's ceramic and polyethylene there to do its job. 
But I've got our 300 blackout and I have two specialty rounds for you. I have our M80A1. Again, that's the Army's current issue ball round, but I've got it loaded in 300 black. And I have M14A1. That is an older armor piercing incendiary known for making very bright flashes and catching lots of things on fire. Because of its length though, I am not seeing very good velocities in 300 blackout. I think it's right around 1500 feet per second because of how long the bullet is. I've got a 10 and a half inch upper here, JK Armament rifle kit. The M80A1 will be first. This will be hopefully above where the date is. No velocity, sorry about that folks. Might be too, the sun might be messing with it. We'll try for this second one here. Hope we get a nice bright flash. Fifteen seventy-eight, I think, and I saw a nice, bright, nice bright flash. Uncle Roger, like two thumb up. Our final two shots of the M80A1 was right there, and the M14A1 300 Blackout was right there. Those I would consider fair hits. I don't know what's left of this plate. <laughs> that API though, look at how that incendiary compound burns stuff, even our ceramic tiles there. Place those bits in the comments below. Ruh-oh, raggy. Two penetrations on there now. Again, I always like to say, just because you see a penetration here, that's never a definitive 100% answer. Always ask that the manufacturer threat profile these at an accredited lab. If anything, I hope my followers and new time viewers appreciate the teardown where we try to see all the cool magic that happens in here. This plate is constructed of quite a few different materials. Here is our cover. This did a pretty good job of allowing me multiple strikes and you can see that there's not any fragmentation coming outwards. That's usually what you see with ceramic plates is the ceramic comes out this way and it does cut across the bottom. I think the reason for that is they have a very thin layer of high or ultra high molecular weight polyethylene in the front that's helping catch fragments. That API, I love that stuff. I wish I could get more of that. Now we get to our strike face and this, what, this is what allows this to be flexible. I apologize for all the noise in the background, is we have some Aramid Kevlar fiber here, and these tiles are adhered to it, and it allows it to flex. It only will flex so far, you know, there's been people who've asked me to, you know, flex a plate like this and try to shoot inside, you know, one of these cracks, and that's probably impossible for me to do. That'd be a better job for the NIJ to do without a cover on. Our ceramic tiles are pretty much unchanged from the original ICW, 220 thousandths thick. They are a little thicker in the center. You can see that interesting shape there, divoted there. And in the back, we've got some more aramid fiber. Our backer, which is increased, is about 560 thousandths. It is not pressed, because if it was pressed, you couldn't flex with it. Dyneema is that brand. And our penetrations again were from the 300 blackout threats and that shot of M80 ball down in the corner. These two shots up here, as you can see, did not go through the back of this plate. They actually looks like they angled upwards and penetrated. Then finally out back at about 157 thousandths, give or take, the, the destruction area is a high density foam that is used to help control blunt force trauma. This is a very interesting plate. Uh, Stealth Armor Systems makes their Hexar in a similar fashion, although they use much smaller tiles and they cover the outside of their tiles with our Aramid and they use, I think, a lot more adhesive because their plate is harder to take apart. But overall, this plate took quite a bit of hits and for 5.56 five, coverage, and you know, say 16 inch 308 with you know hunting rounds or any of that stuff, this is gonna stop it no problem. Well, everyone, Mario's not the only one 
that can throw fireballs at stuff. I'd say our Safe Life Defense Frass did fairly well. I think again and again what we're seeing here is 30 cal seems to be the upper limit of most of our plate designs. 5.56 five, with these nice thick little ceramic tiles doesn't seem to be a concern. However, when we stepped up to even our 300 blackout with our little M80A1 and the M14A1, you know, we're going quite a few hundred feet per second less than design. So, I mean, that's many hundreds of yards downrange. Those little 30 cals break up these little tiles and they just find their way through the polyethylene. The rest of this plate seemed to be fairly well constructed, just like the last plate that we shot. This particular plate design will run you more money than other level three pluses in its category, but the advantage is that it is flexible. So depending on how you carry your plate carrier and how much mobility you need, even that little bit of flex goes a long way in providing you with the ability to either shoulder a rifle or draw a pistol or do any other kind of work where you need your arms extended. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here because I'm going to go home and have some pork tenderloin for dinner. But at the end of all of my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible. Number one is my Patreon and Subscribestar fans. I have a little link tree in the description below for different ways to either contact me and ask me questions or support me through affiliate links. I do have a discount code for Safe Life Defense. I do believe it is just Buffman. It saves you 10% and it earns me a sales commission to help me repay and buy some of these rounds that I used in here because they're not cheap. Number two is Safe Life Defense, who again, in full transparency, provided me with these plates to destroy with no strings attached. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range. With all that being said, I'm going to get the heck out of here because it's time to go home.